Hey, you're welcome back. Kevin Crawl here again for another episode of Tips and Techniques. Now, in my comments section, I've had a lot of questions about my green wood turning and the success I've had turning green wood. Uh, a lot of people want to know why don't I get failures? Why don't I get the checking and cracking that's typical with green wood turning? And I had to let you know, you just had to know one secret. And that secret is. And you're almost guaranteed perfect success every single time you follow that one secret. Now, did you get all that? That's my recipe for success, and I'm not going to share it again. Now, unfortunately, there's no magic secret to success in Greenwood Turning. But if you follow these few steps I'm going to show you, you can dramatically reduce your failure rate and enjoy the nearly perfect success rate that I have in Greenwood Turning. So, you know the drill. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the turning. Thanks again for watching. Okay, i got two logs here. They're both from the same tree. It's black maple. It's cut down about a year and a half ago. Now, the log on the left, you can see I halved it. And there is a little bit of surface checking on the end, but it's not horrible. Now, the log on the right, I did not have it. And you can see the checking is much more profound and much deeper. So, the first step you want to do is have your log. Now, some people would say you have to remove the pith. Well, what they do is take a, a, a sliver of the wood out of the top, removing the pith completely. Now, I haven't found that to be all that effective. And what it does, it eliminates the amount of wood you have to work with. Another technique other people will use is applying an end grain sealer to control the checking. I haven't found that to be all that effective either. So what I do as my first step is I have the log and that's it. Now if you have access to a felled tree that has not been cut up yet, you can control the length of the logs. You want to keep them as long as possible. That way you'll minimize your amount of waste and you can maximize the size of your turnings. You just have to make sure the logs aren't too heavy so you can haul them out in your vehicle. Now on the other hand, if you're dealing with wood that's been left behind by tree trimmers, you're going to be dealing with logs that are typically about 16 inches long. And that's because the tree trimmers will use their chainsaw blade and measure off the length of wood and then cut off the log. Now with a log of this size, you'll typically have checking that's going to penetrate about an inch or so on each end. Now, here's the biggest tip I can give you in working with green wood, is you have to cut off that one inch on each end, plus an additional inch or so into the wood. That will clear you from any checking and any potential stresses that are caused by the checking. So what I do, I start out by taking a 10 inch uh, table saw blade. I have a 12 inch lathe, so I use a 10 inch blade. And I just center it on the log, I go ahead and just uh, trace around it. I just trace a little bit bigger. That'll give me about almost 11 inches in diameter. So what I'm doing in re end result is I'm cutting away two, two and a half, three inches on each end. Um, and I'll verify after I make the chainsaw cuts to make sure I cut away all the checking and a little bit more than that. So. Let me go ahead and get this uh, cut out and uh, we'll get back to it. Okay, as you can see, there's still some checking here, so I got to trim this down a little bit more.
Well, as you can see, it's still checking. So, there's not much I can do with this blank. So what I end up doing is uh, just cutting it up in the, the wedges and use it for um, ingrain turning. But if I would have tried turning it with that existing crack, I definitely would have had problems. Even if I tried to CA glue it, there's still stresses inside this wood that would keep it from checking. Okay, we're on log number two. Let's we'll see if we can get anything out of this one. Okay, this log is just not going to work for what I want to turn with it, which is just a basic natural edge bowl. It has multiple centers on it, which I knew, but on the other side, the pith is offset in the wrong direction. So it's just not going to work, so I'll set this one aside for now. And we'll move on to the next log. Okay, now this is a log of cherry. As you can see, there is a huge check on this side, and there's also a huge check on the other end. So, because this log is long enough, I can cut away all that checking and produce a usable bowl blank out of this one. That I'll guarantee. So let me get this cut up. Okay, now that's a usable blank, and all the checking is out of there, and I should be able to produce a pretty uh, good piece out of this. I'm just going to knock off the corners so it'll fit on my lathe. Okay, now I have a bowl blank that I'm just about guaranteed will not crack on me. I cut away all the checking and then some. So this is ready to be turned. and. This leftover piece I can cut long enough that I should be able to cut away any checking that develops out of this when I go to turn this one. So I have a little bit more uh, cutting I'm going to do since I have the chainsaw out. So since I'm not going to get to this right away, here's my next tip. You can store your blanks in a plastic bag. It's tied up real good, and you can leave these in here for up to a week or so without any sort of problem, without any checking, and they won't develop any mold. So if you can't get to your bowl, uh, bowl blank right away, go ahead and wrap it up in a plastic bag, and it'll keep for a while. So let me get to uh, cutting, and we'll get back to turning. Now I went ahead and cut open this crotch section so you'd be able to better see what I'm trying to accomplish when I create these bowl blanks. Now this is a log I had at the beginning of the video which I said there are quite deep cracks in it. And you can see these checks radiate quite far into the piece. So to help you to be able to better see this I'm going to go ahead and mark the end of these checks. Now, I could create a circle right at the end of these checkings, but that would ultimately lead to checks in the final piece. So what I'm going to do is pull back off of those checks. That's an inch and a half or so, and then create my circle from there. So I'm still able to capture the crotch figure, but I'm far enough away from the checking so I don't have to worry about checking in the final piece.
Okay, it's been 24 hours since I cut this blank out. It's been wrapped up in this bag. So, I'm going to get to turning it now. And as I unwrap it, you can smell the moisture coming out of it. And hopefully you can see, it looks just as fresh as the uh, moment I cut it out. Now, in dealing with greenwood turning, it's a race against the clock. It's a race against the wood checking and cracking and warping. And the goal is to do the turning on one turning and do it just as fast as you can to avoid all those problems. Now, if you cannot do it all in one turning, it's not the end of the world. There's a couple tricks I can show you that will buy you some time. And let me show you those right now. Now, the first tip I want to share with you is if you anticipate that your piece is going to stay inside your jaws for an extended amount of time, you're going to deal with some rust issues, as you might be able to see here. So what I'll do is I'll line the inside of my jaws with a plastic bag. So let me do that for you. Then with a the utility knife, I'll just trim away the excess. Okay, I'm good to go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get it sanded up now. Okay, now that I have that sanded up, what I'll do is grab another bag. And then I'll take my plastic bag and I'm going to wrap up my piece. But before I do that, I have a bottle of water, and if I think my piece is going to crack or check, what I could do is spray down the end grain, both end grains, and really saturate the, the piece. Now, I'm pretty confident that this piece is not going to crack, so I'm not going to do that for this uh, turning here. 
So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and wrap up my piece in my bag. And what I'm going to do is align it so the grain is level. Now the reason why I do that is if I had it cockeyed or even, you know, at 90 degrees or vertical, the grain's vertical, the water is going to want to seep down to the to low end. And then when you start to lay it up the next time, it's going to have it out of balance. So uh, line your grain horizontally. And you can keep the bag on your piece for a week or more. Uh, eventually you'll run into a situation where you're going to get some molding. But uh, this will definitely prolong your turning until you get back to it. Okay, it's been a week. I haven't touched anything. It's time to unwrap the bowl and see how it fared. And hopefully you can see there's no checking, no cracking. Some of the moisture has come up to the surface, but uh, that's to be expected. Now this is middle of winter and over the last week we've had temperatures that have been in the 40s and then, then down to the 30s in the, the 20s and the teens. So it's been through quite a few uh, freeze-thaw cycles, but uh, overall it fared pretty well. Um, it is in the middle of summer, you'd expect some condensation to be on the inside of the bag, but uh, we didn't have any for uh, here in the middle of winter. So. Now it's time to turn the inside of the bowl, and that's where time really gets sensitive. Now when doing greenwood turning, most people will tell you that you need to leave a very thin wall thickness to avoid checking and cracking. Now while that's a pretty good rule of thumb, I'm going to show you here in a second why that's not always absolutely necessary. Now if you follow my guide for preparing your log, mainly cutting away all your checking, you'll have a little fear about the thickness of your walls. Now what I have in front of me is a few examples of my wet turnings and various wall thicknesses I have on. So let's take a look real quick. This one here is a sixteenth of an inch wall thickness. And I got three sixteenths on this one. And that one's a quarter inch. And five sixteenths on this one. And this is the one that's being featured in this video and that's a half inch. And we got five eighths of an inch on that one. And some of you might remember this one. That's three quarters of an inch. And this one here is a whopping inch and a quarter wall thickness. So if you follow my guide and prepare your logs correctly, anything will be accomplished. Now, when turning the inside of a wet turn piece, it's not the time to worry about taking phone calls, eating dinner, or making a wood turning video. You have to get the piece turned. And what's going to happen is your walls will start warping on you. So time is of the essence. You just have to keep going through it and do it as fast as you can.
Okay, I'll go ahead and get it sanded up now. Okay, now that I'm finished sanding, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the tenon. And before I do that, I want to show you just how warped this piece is. Hopefully you can see that my finger is bouncing all over the piece. But it's considerably warped at this point. That's caused by all the moisture leaving the piece as I'm turning the inside of it and sanding it. And you can reuse these uh, little plastic cutouts. I'll go ahead and set up my disc sander so I can sand down the bottom real quick. Okay, I'm not going to finish sanding down the base at this point. As the piece dries, the base is going to warp. And then after the piece is dry, I'll go ahead and sand down the base for the final time then. Now, the next tip I have for you is actually two tips in one. At this point, you want to apply a finish as soon as possible. And what that finish will do is slow down the drying process and equal out the stresses inside the wood. So you don't have to worry about checking and cracking and developing. But if you cannot get your finish on as soon as possible, the next tip is pull out your plastic bag you used earlier. And you can store your piece in your plastic bag and you can keep it in there for uh, you know several days until you do get your finish on there so that's my next step I'll take it inside and get the finish on there okay and the last tip I can give you to help assure success in greenwood turning is to apply a finish to your your piece as soon as possible and the type of finish I'm talking about is a oil finish which is a a, a curing finish opposed to say a drying finish like polyurethane. A polyurethane is not going to dry on your wet turn piece. Uh, a Danish oil will cure as your piece dries. And a uh, Danish oil will actually slow down the drying process of your piece which will help avoid the checks and cracks because it's going to equal out the forces inside the wood and give you a much uh, greater chance of success. Now this piece we put in the plastic bag. It's been four days since I've uh, turned it. And I haven't looked at it yet, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up and see what we have. And hopefully you can see there's absolutely no checking, no cracking. It looks as fresh as the day I turned it. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and apply the Danish oil finish. Now I'll put on rubber gloves. I think the lighting, well, you might be able to see that. No checks, no cracks. And what I'll do, I'll come back in a few days after the piece has completely dried and I'll show you the the end result that the piece has not cracked and has not checked. 
Well, here we go. As promised, the finished piece with no checking and no cracking. Now, I wanted to add that the species of the wood that you're using, along with the shape that you're turning, will have an effect on whether or not you get checking and cracking. That kind of goes beyond what I wanted to cover in this video. And I'll leave that up to you to experiment with. So, hopefully you enjoyed this latest installment of Tips and Techniques. And if so, hit that like button. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, until next time, thanks again for watching.